Chapter 11 Pronoun Paradise In the past, we've focused on the personal pronouns ego, I, su, you, and autas, aute, auta, he, she, it. Those are the personal pronouns, and they're used overwhelmingly throughout the New Testament. Now we've got to extend our understanding of the pronoun to include things like demonstrative pronouns, this and that, relative pronouns like who and which, reflexive pronouns like himself, myself, yourself, and the reciprocal pronoun one another. Lucky for you, there won't be any chance in this chapter, but there will be a diversity of pronouns that you'll have to learn to recognize. So let's enter Pronoun Paradise. Let's begin by scoping out the pronouns in English first. The demonstratives are pointer pronouns. This for something that is close and that for something that's further away. They basically take two usages. The first is the adjectival use, where the demonstrative pronoun goes with its antecedent, so we have this day is beautiful, this modifies day, or this book, or this car, or that car, or that person, the pronominal use, we can say just by itself, the demonstrative, this is the beginning. And so this doesn't really modify anything in this thing. It takes on a pronominal role and stands by itself. Now the relative pronouns are who and which. So we say, for example, the one who enjoys Greek, enjoys life. How true it is. The keys which were lost in the river are gone forever. The keys is modified by the relative pronoun which, explaining which keys. So the which actually links in the following clause. The keys, that is, the ones which were lost in the river. So relative pronouns relate things to one another. Demonstrative pronouns point to things. Now the reflexive pronoun can be seen in something like he hid himself in the rubble. He hid himself. Himself refers back to the he, which is the subject of the sentence. And finally, there's the reciprocal pronoun. And this is used in this way. They appreciate one another. And so there's a reciprocation between the one and the other. One another. And the Greeks will have a special word for that. The demonstratives are this and that. These are pointer pronouns. This for when something's close and that for when something's farther away. Sometimes the demonstrative pronoun can stand alone by itself as a pronoun. So, for example, you would say, that is, or this is. At other times, it'll function almost like an adjective, where it'll modify a noun. The noun will usually take the article, and it'll be something like, this desk, or this book, or that table. The form this will take when it's kind of an attributive modifier on the noun will be that the noun will take the article and the demonstrative will not. This is exactly the opposite of the attributive adjective, which usually takes the article. And then one final thing, when you've got a demonstrative pronoun that modifies a noun, it, there must be agreement in gender, number, and case. So you'll be able to link them up because they'll be matched in gender, number, and case. So that's how the demonstrative pronoun is going to function, either pronominally by itself 
or adjectivally, modifying a noun. Now let's look at some of the morphology, the actual forms of the various demonstrative pronouns. The first demonstrative pronoun we'll look at is ekanos, means that. And this one is the most easily learned because, frankly, it's exactly the same as the 212 paradigm that we've seen with logos, graphe, and hieron. So it takes the 212 endings, second declension, first declension, second declension, neuter, endings that we've already seen. So it's ekanos, ekanu, ekano, ekanon. Then the akane takes the graphe ending, so it's a, ace, a, ain endings. You can see tagged on to akane. And then akano. You see that that's similar to hieron, except that on the nominative and the accusative, which are the same because it's a neuter, you drop off the noon. We've already seen that with the article. So, and we notice also, ekenu, ekeno, matches exactly the masculine genitive dative. So, there's nothing really new here except the root form, ek ekenos, which means that. So, it's a simple 212 pointer, and you can see then how it can match up with whatever noun it takes, whether masculine, feminine, or neuter, in whatever case it comes. So this is pretty straightforward. Don't memorize this. Just be able to recognize the forms as you see them in the various cases, gender, and then number. And we'll look at the plural of this in the next slide. Echanos. When it goes plural, is as we would expect. Echanoi, following the logoi format with the own, ois, us endings. The echanai following the graphe endings, on, ice, os. And the ekena, exactly following the hieron, plural endings, on, ois, a. The nominative and the accusative being the same, the genitive and dative matching exactly the masculine form. So ekenos, basically once you know the root form, the plural follows exactly the same as what we'd expect from a 212 schema. Now, this is just an overview chart of ekanos, the demonstrative pronoun meaning that. And you can see it's a 212 with the ekanos on the masculine and the first column, ekane, the feminine, coming down similar to graphe, and ekano, following the hieron, except for the Nominative and accusative singular, where you drop off the noon, similar to the article, which is to, for the neuter singular, nominative and accusative. So it's pretty straightforward, just a simple 212. Just got to remember, ekanos means that, and then you match this up, gender, number, and case, to the noun that it modifies. Or, if it stands by itself, it can be whatever. So that's enough of that. Now, ekanos, that, points to something that's further away. Hutos. Is this, pointing to something that's closer at hand. Hutos. It's going to be a little bit more complicated than ekanos, and so you've got to pay attention here. Similar, almost, in some ways, to the, the article that we've learned. The nominative singular masculine is hutos. But notice in the genitive, the dative, and the accusative, it takes a tau in the front, similar to what the darticle did. You remember between ho and to, to, tone. So there are some parallels here between the article and this demonstrative pronoun. Similarly, the feminine starts out with haute and then goes to tautes and then goes down using the graphe endings, but notice the tau once again on the genitive, dative, and accusative singular. Similarly, the neuter starts out with tuto, 
which is very similar to the definite article. It starts out with the tau, and then the tau goes all the way down using the heron type endings, u, o, and then back to the accusative and the nominative are exactly the same in the neuter. So this is hutos for the masculine, haute for the feminine, and tuto for the neuter. And then all the genitive, dative, accusative forms take the tau on the front with the two on two endings on the back. One other switch that you should note, under the feminine, do you notice that instead of going to two two with the omicron upsilon in the embedded diphthong, it goes to an alpha upsilon. So the feminine takes this alpha upsilon, actually just from the nominative form, it drops down alpha upsilon all the way down rather than the omicron upsilon that the other ones have. So the feminine favors the alpha whereas the masculine and neuter favor the omicron. The plural of hutos, haute, tuto, is, as we would expect, the hutoi follows the tau on the front again, similar to what the article does. It has hoi and then takes tone, tois, tus. This becomes tutone, tutois, tutus. And then how tie again takes the tau on the front all the way down in the genitive dative accusative plural with the graphe endings on the back side. Similarly, the tau ta is exactly like hitaran endings on the back side taking the tau all the way down. So no surprises there, except in the neuter plural, do you notice it goes to tau ta? rather than tuta. And so the neuter plural takes the alpha in the nominative and the accusative. And then also, one other little trick, over in the genitive plural of the feminine, you've got two-tone, where it uh, reverts to a omicron, so that the forms for the masculine, feminine, and neuter genitive plural are exactly the same. So just those two modifications, the neuter, nominative, and accusative with the alpha endings going to an alpha rather than the usual omicron for the neuter, and the feminine ending with a long omega, on, going to the omicron in the genitive plural, matching straight across on the genitive plural. No big deal. Uh, the point is to learn hutas, haute, tauta, and then just basically a 2 one two with modifications dancing back and forth between the alphas and the omicrons. But those are pretty easy to figure out. You've just got to hang flexible on some of those. Now here's the overview paradigm for hutas. You'll notice that there is no tau on the front of the nominative singular for hutas and haute, similar to the definite article that had, that had ha and he. Tuta, the neuter, does take the tau on the front. The endings on the back side are the simple 212 lagos grafe hiran endings, drop the noon on the on the neuter nominative and accusative singular, but the rest is the same. The nominative plural hutoi and hautai is similar to the hoi and hai article that does not take the tau on the front, but the other ones do. And then noticing in the neuter plural, it goes to tau ta with an alpha, with that alpha ending possibly influencing it. And then you've also got the two tone all the way across the genitive plural for the masculine, feminine, and neuter, the own ending shifting the normal feminine alpha to an omicron. So again, we're not going to memorize this, but you should be able to recognize this and, and just know this when you see it. A couple examples of how these demonstrative pronouns are used in actual sentences. Ekinos moi apen. That one said to me. That one, you see, is a 
pronominal use of ekenos doesn't modify a noun or anything. It stands by itself. That one said to me, moi. Apen means said. A second example is humes ek tutu to kosmu este. Humes, you, and then pick up the verb at the end, este, are, ek tutu to kosmu of this world or from this world. And you see the tutu matches the kosmu in number, gender, and case. So kosmu is the noun that's modified by tutu, this world, as opposed to that world. Notice also that the kosmu takes the article where the tutu does not. Well, enough of this and that. Let's look at the relative pronouns now. Hos, he, ho. Which is who or which. Who for when it refers to a person. Which when it refers to an inanimate object. Now, the singular, you'll notice on the masculine, feminine, and neuter are simply the 212 endings by themselves. So you have hos, u, o, hon. Those are exactly the second declension endings on logos, logu, logo, logon. Similarly, he, heis, he, hein are the endings for graphe. And ho, who, ho, ho are the endings for the neuter, dropping the noon off of he eron in the nominative of an accusative, but we're used to seeing that. The plural endings, you've got hoi, hon, hois, hus, which are the endings for logos. And then for the plural feminine, you've got hi, hon, Heis, has, which are exactly the graphe endings. And similarly, the ha, hon, hois, ha endings match the he eron. Exactly. So the relative pronoun is easily learned because we already know these as endings on the 212 nouns. Just split them off. Now there's a couple tricks here. You'll notice on the nominative feminine and neuter, it's he and ho. Now, when you see that ho by itself, the omicron by itself, that's going to trigger in your head, possibly, the article. The only difference between the he here and the ho and the article forms for the feminine is that this one takes the acute accent. The article does not. Similarly, for the plural nominative masculine feminine, you have Hoi and hi, which is exactly the same as the article, except this one, again, has the acute accent. So the acute accent makes a big difference here between whether you've got the article in the nominative form or whether you've got this relative pronoun. And you've got to keep track of that because it'll sneak up on you, and that little acute will make a big difference when you're translating. So be aware, relative pronouns take the cute accent that article in the nominative form does not. So this is our relative pronoun, who and which, for the masculine, feminine, neuter, singular, and plural. A couple examples to show how the relative pronoun is used. Kai hos u lambane. And who did not receive. The lambane tells you it's a third singular present active indicative, which then is matched by the hos, which is, gives you the who as the subject or the nominative form. So it's who did not receive. The second example is kai to logo on apen ho yesus. And to the word, to, logo, which, hon, Jesus, spoke, apen. 
So the hon here is a relative pronoun which Jesus spoke, relating the word, specifying which word it's talking about, the word which is which is the one that Jesus spoke. So it's a relative pronoun, relates things. Now for the reflexive pronouns. The nominative reflexive pronouns use our personal pronouns ego, su, autos. But when you switch to a different case, the genitive, dative, accusative, then there are special pronouns that are called the reflexive pronouns. So we have am out to myself, set out to yourself, and he out to he out tes, he out to for himself, herself, or itself. Am out to, am out to, am out tan. You'll notice that the masculine takes the logos, second declension, endings. Similarly, the am out tes, if it's a feminine, takes the grafes, grafe, grafane endings, as we would expect. You'll notice that in both of these, there's no nominative singular or nominative plural. Those reflexives are triggered by the personal pronouns. In the plural, you'll notice that the mu gets dropped out, and so we've got heauton, heautois, heautus. You'll also notice that the rough breathing in the plural. So the plural drops the mu and takes a rough breathing, in both the masculine and the feminine. Similar to the first person reflexive pronoun is se to or yourself. And you'll notice se to se autos, se auton takes the logos sendings for the masculine. And the se autes, se aute, se autain takes the grafe endings as we would expect. You'll notice, however, in the genitive, dative, accusative plural forms that the heauton, heautois, heautus returns, and the sigma is dropped, and again, a rough breathing is placed on the epsilon. Now you'll notice the plot is thickening. You'll notice the heauton, heautois, heautus for the first person is exactly the same as for the second person. And guess what? Exactly the same for the third person. So the context has really got to separate these haotone plurals apart. The good part is that they're not used all that frequently, and so you can usually figure out which one it is from the context. Context determines meaning, once again. Now for the third person reflexive pronoun, himself, herself, or itself, we have heautu in the masculine, heauto, heauton. So we've got the logos sendings once again, a 2 1 2 structure, the, the feminine form taking the grafes, grafe, grafane endings, and the neuter taking the heeron endings, heautu, heauto, heauto. Notice once again that the noon is dropped off the accusative singular. And the good part is that the plurals are exactly the same as what we've seen in the first person reflexive and the second person reflexive. We just have the bare heauton with the rough breathing. And actually, all these third person reflexives take the rough breathing. So it's heauton, heautois, heautus. Again, the context will have to separate these plural forms as the first person, second person, third person are all exactly the same morphological forms. So these are the reflexive pronouns in the genitive, dative, and accusative, singular and plural, and for the nominative, the personal pronouns, ego, su, and autos, for this reflexive function, myself, yourself, or himself, herself, or itself. 
couple examples with this reflexive pronoun are T legace peri se autu. T is what? Legace, what do you say? Peri se autu, about yourself or concerning yourself? Question mark. Second example is tuto de af he autu uk apen. But he did not speak uk apen, did not speak tuto this af he autu from himself or of himself with the third person reflexive pronoun he autu going with the or the apo preposition. Taking the genitive. Now the reciprocal pronoun is fairly easy. It's the word alelon, means one another. Reciprocation back and forth from one to the other and back. One another. An example of this is koinonian ekomen met alelon. And it means fellowship we have with one another, or we have fellowship with one another, alelon. So this one is not uh, parsed out with all the different endings and things. It usually just comes as a base form, alelon, which is pretty straightforward. And that's good. Now for the pronoun summary chart. This basically has all the pronouns that we've learned so far. Do you remember we had ego mumoime su susoise hemes hemon hemin hemas and autas aute auto for our chant for the personal pronouns. The personal pronouns are overwhelmingly more frequent than these other pronouns all put together. So we learned a chant for that one. And then the demonstrative pronouns are ekenos, ekene, ekeno, for that, in the masculine, feminine, and neuter. Demonstrative pronouns are pointing pronouns, that, pointing far away, this, closer at hand. Hutos, tutu, haute, tautes, tuto, tutu. Is the demonstrative pronoun this? We notice that hutos, haute, take a tau on the front when they go into the genitive dative accusative forms, as similar to the article that we've seen earlier. So this and that, ekenos, hutos. And then you've got the relative pronouns, hos, he, ho, who and which. And these do not take the tau on the front. And you also have to be careful for the he and the ha, that you don't confuse these with an article. These have the acute accent as opposed to the article, which is simply he and ho without the acute accent. Then the reflexive pronouns, only available in the genitive, dative, accusative, are mo to se to and he to of myself, yourself, and himself or herself, itself. And then finally, the reciprocal pronoun alelon being one another. So these give us then a plethora of pronouns that we can work with and translate in the New Testament. We have made it to Pronoun Paradise. The vocabulary for Chapter 11. Our first word is ap erkomai. And it means I go away or leave. Our second word is ekenos. And it means that. 
Our third word is eudaios a on. And it means Jewish. Our fourth word is kathos. And it means as or just as. Our fifth word, hos, hey, ho. Which means who or which. Our sixth word is hotan. And it means when. Our seventh word is autos, aute, tuto. And it means this. Our eighth word is pollen. And it means again. Our ninth word is petros. And it means Peter. Our tenth word is huper. And it's a preposition meaning for or about in the genitive or above and beyond in the accusative. 